Hi. Um, firstly, it's so great to be back in Birmingham because I was born and bred here and I've been in the South since I was 18 years old. So it's actually really nice to be back in Birmingham. So thanks for having me. Um, my name is Jordan. Um, I am a former Paralympian. It's weird saying former because I've literally just retired um, in October. And um, when I heard about the dare to change, I was like, well, how am I gonna do a speech about this? But then I thought, actually, I'll just tell you about my story because my story incorporates every single variety of change I think that you could possibly think of. Um, so I'm gonna start right at the end um, because I think this is the least important part of my journey and my story, uh, which is the outcome. And uh, this is like my bragging rights. So this is what I like to get out of the way first. I have, well, <clears throat> I can't even tell you how much I've won. I've won a lot. I have uh, four Paralympic medals, 13 Grand Slam titles. Um, and I was former world number one uh, in wheelchair tennis. And I retired, like I said, in October, just after uh, the Tokyo Paralympic Games. And this is the, these kind of pictures, is, this is me. This is what people think is me. This is in the media, um, which is great because everyone loves to have a trophy and to have an inspiration and everything like that. But for me, it's actually really important that people know that I have a story and I have a journey. Uh, I'm relatable as well, which is really important to me. So I'm going to take you back um, to the important stuff. So this is me as a kid. So I was born with a genetic condition called osteogenesis imperfecta, which is, in layman's terms, uh, brittle bone disease. So obviously now I can walk and everything's great, but I can't uh, play sport or I can't run or jump or anything like that, and that is why I compete in the Paralympics. So when I was a child, um, as you can see from the picture on the left, um, I, I was in and out of hospital. I couldn't, I couldn't really walk very well. Uh, school was really, really difficult. And you've got to remember, this is the early 90s where disability wasn't really a thing. Um, I was very much an outcast. Um, my parents were told that I would never, ever walk. I would never go to a, a normal school. Um, and to that, they said, well, <laughs> no thanks. I think we'll do our own thing. Um, and it was tough, you know, growing up in and out of hospital. And I, I think I've broken my legs about 25 times now. Uh, I had about 10 or 11 operations. Um, going through a metal scanner is interesting for me because I have metal work everywhere. So I didn't have the best start in terms of becoming a professional athlete. Let's just say that. So when I was three years old, um, as you can see, I broke my leg, which is standard for me at that age. Um, I went out to Israel where my dad was, a, he was also a former Paralympian um, and he was playing tennis out in Israel. He took me and my mum uh, to the tournament and obviously I couldn't do anything fun because I'd broken my leg so I couldn't go swimming or basically do anything. So somebody gave me a racket and a ball and these four photos are actually the first ever time I hit a tennis ball which for me is amazing because I actually captured, well, I didn't capture it, my parents captured this moment. Um, and it was so strange because this was 1995 and I was all over the Israeli news, the Israeli uh, TV. I had reporters everywhere because no one had ever seen a three-year-old girl in a wheelchair with a broken leg playing tennis. And I think um, back then, I think if you were in a wheelchair and, and if you were disabled, you were supposed to be sort of not kept away, but I think just uh, you weren't supposed to be doing stuff that others were doing. So when I came home from here, my dad, um, he got me into tennis lessons and he thought, okay, let's try and see if we can do something here with you. I'm a tennis player. Let's see if you can be a tennis player. And that is basically how my whole journey started. Here, I'm about nine or 10 years old. Um, obviously not a finely tuned athlete at this point, but I had been playing quite a bit of tennis and I was just about to get talent spotted. Um, 
my dad was still playing as well. I didn't know, obviously I was still in school. I didn't know what was going on. I was still going through a lot of bullying at school, um, a lot of hospital appointments, broken legs, you name it, everything. So tennis for me was a little bit of a release. Um, it, was, it was, I could go on court, I could be with other people who were like me, who, who could understand what I was going through. And here is where um, I like to show the difference because I wasn't born this person here. Like I wasn't born a star, I wasn't born a Paralympic athlete, I wasn't born in shape. I might have been born with a little bit of talent, maybe that helped. But it's really important, and I think this goes throughout life, no matter if you're in business or if you're in sport or if you're in education, whatever it may be, sometimes it's really difficult to see the end goal. Because for me, in this picture on the left, I held my first gold medal. Um, someone else on my team at the point had won a gold medal. And I was like, this is where I want to be. This is what I want. This is what I want to do with my life. But as a young kid, that's really difficult to, am I ever going to be that person? Oh, that will never happen to me. I'm never going to be that good. And I think these two photos are really lovely because it's important to recognize that no one, is, is, no one starts at the end. This is me in uh, Rio 2016. And I think this is uh, where my change really happened. Um, a lot of changes in my life happened at this point. Um, I actually look really happy with my bronze medal, but inside I was soul destroyed. Um, 2014, 15 and 16 were the most decorated times in my career. Uh, I was so successful. I was, I would say most definitely one of the favorites to win gold in Rio. I was in the best shape of my life. Everything was perfect. And I got to Rio. I played my first round. I won it. I went into my second round and I broke my wrist. And it was actually due to um, a stress fracture. So I'd been practicing too much. I'd been playing too much tennis, which is ironic. Um, and, I, I, and I came out with a bronze. And although I'd won a bronze previously in London 2012, you know, my parents and everyone who were there were saying, well, you've won a bronze, you'd broken your wrist. And yes, I'd broken my wrist in the first round and I'd gone on and I'd meddled, which, which is fantastic, I know. Um, but for me, I, was, I wanted to come out with gold. That was my whole like, life achievement was I wanted gold and I only came out with bronze. So then after, I, just, I, take a, I took a big change in my life. I decided... Um, I love my sport and I want to do more in my sport, but I was so soul distraught after Rio and everything that had happened that I just needed a change. And I wasn't sure, look, I was just so unhappy in sport and I wasn't sure if I was ever going to go back. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to achieve my goals in sport. And that was a really tough place to be in because for so many years, I mean, I'm in my early 20s there, uh, mid 20s, and I'd been, that's all I've been doing my whole life is I wanna get gold. And suddenly I thought, maybe I'm just never gonna get gold. Maybe this isn't my path. So I ended up having my lovely son um, in 2018. I had 18 months out from tennis. And um, although it was amazing, I did miss it. Um, and that was a big change for me mindset wise because it's, I, was a, I, was, I was selfish. I was, a, I was in an individual sport. I was traveling the world. I had my whole team for me. Everything was about me all the time. I was the star of the show. And suddenly I've got this little human um, who now he's the star of the show, still is the star of the show. He's four years old now. Um, and it was such a mind shift for me because I was so wrapped up in I want to win gold or I want to be on the podium because these, um, I'd got the medals in doubles, never in singles. And I thought that was an underachievement for myself. And when I had my son, I just thought to myself, well, why am I being so hard on myself? This is not what I would say or want for my own child if he was in that position. So I decided that after I watched Wimbledon in 2000 and I want to say 18, 
um, I decided I'm going to come back to the sport because now I've got a bit of a mindset shift. Um, I feel like I could do better. And I feel like now as a mother, I would have a different perception on, I had a different perception on life, but also on myself. And I wanted to, I wanted to sort of wipe the slate clean. I wanted to look at myself in a new light. I wanted to make improvements. And I wanted to sort of embrace this big change in my life, which was difficult because now I had to sort out childcare as well as travel the world. But it was moments like this um, that made it all worthwhile. So this is um, 2021. Um, I always forget what year we're in now. That was last year, wasn't it? It feels like forever ago. Um, so I won Wimbledon with my lovely doubles partner, Yui, from Japan. Um, and my son actually ran on, onto the court after we, we'd won. And it was so amazing to, to share that with him. It kind of made everything I'd, I'd done and come back worthwhile. And at this point, there were doing so many changes in my life with going through you know, what I'd been through as a kid and having people tell me I would never walk, I would never be a professional athlete. When I got talent spotted, I had actual GB coaches say, this girl is never gonna make it, she's not good enough. And I just didn't listen to any of them because I knew what I wanted out of life. And when I got to this moment, um, it kind of just sank in and I was like, you know what, I've done pretty well. And now I get to share that with my son. This, this was Tokyo, Tokyo 2020, 2020, but actually happened in 2021. Um, I love these photos because these photos really captured all of my emotions in sort of a matter of five seconds. And the whole reason why I came back after having my son was to get this moment. I wanted to come back to Tokyo. I wanted to prove to people that that I could be on the podium and that I, I did have something in me more than what I had before. And I also wanted to prove that just because I was a mother didn't mean that I couldn't be a professional athlete and also be successful. And I think this is something that was really important to me because it doesn't just apply to sport as well, I think, for, for women. Um, I just wanted to sort of have that woman power and be like, yes, I'm a mother, but yes, I'm also really successful. Leading up to Tokyo was challenging. Um, there was obviously a lot of setbacks, uh, childcare issues. Um, I gained a lot of weight when I, when I had my son and I had, I had to go through working with a nutritionist, with a PT to sort of get myself back in shape because you know, all of the other girls on the circuit had been playing for the last two years and I'd been sitting around um, <laughs> with a child at home. So physically, it was really, really difficult to get back in shape. Mentally, I had to sort of start again, and I had to, I had to have a different perception on, on everything, you know? And I think it naturally happened when I became a mother, because I would, before I had my son, I would go into a match, and if I lost, it was the end of the world and I'd be so critical on myself. When I was coming back from having my son, I'd come off court and I'd be like, yeah, you know what, I lost, but that's okay. Because you you, you, when you lose, I feel like you learn the most. And I really felt like that with everything in my life that had happened, with all of the changes that had happened, actually, if I look back at the time, it, you know, it felt horrendous when the changes happened because it was, you know, I had my son and I didn't know what I was going to do with my career. I broke my wrist and I thought my dreams were over. I was in and out of hospital and I never knew if I could make something of myself or even just fit into society in general. But now I look back and think if I hadn't have had all of those setbacks and if I hadn't have had all of those changes that had happened in my life, I would never have been on this path and I probably would never have got to this moment because I would never have grown through the challenges and I would never have had the realization of, okay, let me just have a little step back. Let me think about what's going on and let me see if I can get a solution. I had got at this point, well, just before this point, I had got three bronze medals and um, 
I'd got on the singles podium, which this, this, this actual photo is from when I'd got on the singles podium. So I'd won my singles bronze medal. And my dad, he won a bronze medal in 1984. And ever since I was a little girl, he said, I bet you'll never beat my bronze medal. And literally ever, ever since I was a little girl, I was just like, I'm going to beat my dad. I'm going to get more than a bronze medal. So you can imagine three bronze medals in, I was niffed. <laughs> I was like, I can't let my dad, uh, I can't be on par with my dad. I have to go one more. Um, and in Tokyo, I did. I went one more and I did win silver with my doubles partner, Lucy Shuka, um, which was incredible because not only did I have my own personal reasons why I wanted to win silver, but to come out of Tokyo with all of that adverse behind me um, was, yeah, was one of my greatest achievements, I think, because of how much struggle there was beforehand. And this is me on the podium, I think, crying my eyes out. I think the mask kind of ruins it, but I am crying. I'm really, really happy. <laughs> and to come home and share that moment with Jackson was just one of the most incredible experiences because he'd watched me on the telly and he knew what mummy was doing. And I hope that he sees that, you know, I was raising him, I was being a, a mum, but I was also doing, like, fulfilling my own dreams as well. So after I got back from Tokyo, I probably had uh, one of the biggest changes in my life as well. Um, I was engaged and I decided to break off the engagement and go it alone and move to a brand new city, a brand new town. I decided to give up tennis completely and start a brand new life. Um, I think the only thing I did keep was uh, my name, <laughs> so that's always good. Um, that's a big change for me because I was giving up financial stability. I was giving up um, a family, my family that I knew. I was giving up my house, my, my city, my friends, every, everything that I'd known and my career that I had done since I was basically three years old and I'm, I'm literally about to turn 30. So a whole third of my life had been covered by tennis and the people in tennis and now I was moving away from that which is so scary um, it's a decision I didn't take very <laughs> lightly um, and at the time you know at the time of Tokyo when you saw those photos of me winning I had um, been going through a breakup two weeks prior so it was it was a crazy time in Tokyo and he was there because he was also my coach um, so, um, as far as challenges come, I think that was probably um, a big one. And to have all of that pressure on me, knowing that Tokyo was my last ever chance to get on the singles podium, to get a silver medal, to even just compete for my country, when I had all of that stuff going on in the background that not a lot of people knew about, um, that's something I'm really proud of myself for. But it's also really nice for me to share that with other people and be open and say, yeah, I was experiencing a lot of change and a lot of adverse in the back. Um, but actually, it was just about my mindset and how I, over, how I overcame that. Because I personally think change is so good, even though change is scary. And for a lot of people, it is because it is scary, right? Like you, you change something even minuscule in your life. You make one decision and it can change the whole path that you're on. And now I am loving my life with my son, with my new career. I work in financial services, which is, I know, a complete 180 to um, professional sport. Um, but it's something that I really love and I'm really passionate about. And I have met some of the most incredible people that I think I've ever met in my life. Um, my son is happy. I get to still dip in and out of um, my sport, which is amazing because I have a really close relationship with the GB team. And, and now I'm just kind of living my best life, but also still trying to embrace the change um, and sort of stay on, stay on a path and just, I'm kind of just going to go with the flow. Um, so for me, I guess just to summarize, um, is that change is inevitable. It's always going to happen. But growth is optional. Like that, that's all on you.
And I think that's something that I try and embrace every day because I do know it's inevitable. Um, so thank you for listening to my story and I would be happy to take any questions. Um, I'm very open and honest, so you can ask me anything you like.